Hi, Steve Adubato here with uh, the talented and lovely, it's not a game show, I just want to clarify that, it's Lessons in Leadership, Mary Gamba, our executive producer and co-host. Mary, before we bring, bring on our great friend, uh, Marjorie Perry, um, again, people might ask, why do you always tell everyone who the sponsors are? Let's see, because hmm, they pay for the show. So we'll get that out of the way. Marge Perry understands business. Let's take care of business first. Go, Mary. Yeah, happy to do so. Thank you for to all of our wonderful sponsors. We have Valley Bank, Prager Metis, Seton Hall, and the Bacino Leadership Institute, New Jersey Sharing Network. We also have two brand new sponsors, Kessler Foundation. And, um, oh my goodness, I'm not really forgetting Delta Dental of New Jersey. Delta Dental of New Jersey. Exactly. Thank you so much Check to Randy. Check out those veneers. <laughs> Never mind, I shared too much. So, oh, your veneers. Um, I see what you did there. So no, thank you don't you have to repeat it. Um, <laughs> hey, and by the way, uh, Marge, Marge knows that we're on News Code Plus, but she may not know all the other digital platforms we are on. Please, Mary Gamba. I'm thrilled to share. So we are on iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts. We're also on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Audible. Also on the web at nj.com. Our own website, stand-deliver.com and R-O-I-N-J, so we are everywhere. And also you can follow Steve at, on Facebook. We haven't been plugging that a lot late, lately, Steve, at Steve Adubato, that's A-D-U-B-A-T-O-P-H-D. Yeah, you can see a lot of videos of my daughter playing uh, softball and dancing. <laughs> and dancing. Um, how about this one? And also Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey, Commerce Magazine, and New Jersey Business and Industry Association, New Jersey Business, enough plugging. Marjorie Perry, president and CEO of MZM Construction Company, a trustee of the Great Caucus Educational Corporation, our not-for-profit arm. Marjorie, you are looking especially, not only beautiful, but profitable today. I am profitable and I am always beautiful. So thank you for those two wonderful compliments. I appreciate that, Steve. Thank you for having me, you and Mary. Our pleasure. Hey, give a plug to MZM Construction. Describe it, its history what you're doing, and then we'll get into some other stuff. Sure, MZM Construction does a lot of management now. We're at the new Terminal 1 that's coming in. We're at the Conrack where your new cars will be parked. Uh, we are very fortunate to be a small joint venture with some of the largest players in the state of New Jersey. So we do a lot of work for the federal government as well, Picatinny, up and down the Eastern Seaboard. So that's what we do on construction management side and self-performing. And Beth Israel Hospital, by the way. So we do a lot of work North with Beth, Daryl Hospital. Terry, yes, our good absolutely, Daryl Terry, yep, yep. absolutely, yes. So, you know, Marge, let me ask you something. You know, it, data, Marge is a really solid day-to-day -day manager, meaning she's obsessed with the details. She and I talk offline about this. Um, she cares deeply. She's involved, but she's also stepping back, big picture leader. Here's the question. How much of your time as a leader of the company do you spend making deals? Hmm, that's two questions because you talked about the details. So the details, I probably now am down to about 30, 30% 30 per day. I'm pulling probably, back a little bit? Yeah, Are you yeah pulling back absolutely. More? Yeah, yeah. We pivoted quite a bit on that. Uh, I am really strategic now. I'm building strategic alliances. I want to be in the growth business mode. Uh, we've talked about that as well. And the only way to do that is that you have to work more on the business, as you know, versus in the business. So that's been a very, very intentional decision to become more of a strategic thinker with my strategic team that I've hired probably about eight or nine months ago, working with the, uh, the accountants, working with forecasting, and really, really looking at what the next metrics are going to be for where the growth is going to be. Because if you don't do that right now with a digital marketing plan and a, a strong strategic plan, uh, a continuity plan, you know, you're just not going to go anywhere and you'll just continue to circle the block. Yeah, I want to talk about business development and making deals because I feel like I spend at least half of my time in business development, raising money, yes. bringing in sponsors, keeping the sponsors, keeping it going. And, and listen, I'm not convinced I can delegate any of that. Mary's great on that. Laura Van Bloom's great on as well. But in the end, I'm making the deals. And I'm That's not saying right. look at me, but, I, but they, I think they want to make the deal with me. Mary, jump in on the leadership, business development, End of it, and then I'll have Marge jump in as well because trust me, she's a deal maker. 
Yeah, I agree completely, Steve. When it comes to closing that deal, it is essential that you are the one in that room or in that call or in that Zoom meeting uh, closing that deal. Everything that goes on behind the scenes, all the touch points, we always make sure that we're keeping in touch with our uh, re- people that we have relationships with. And that's where Laura, myself, and the rest of our team come into play. Every person is a leader within the organization and needs to make sure that they're continuing to maintain those relationships. Yeah, and Mary, well, let me just say this to pivot off of you and Steve is that yes, they look for me at the end of the day. So I'm the deal maker, I'm the rainmaker, whatever title you want to put on that. So that's why I had to free myself up from doing the miscule details in the business so that when it was time to jump and meet a new leader or a new organization, uh, I, I'm the one that they really want to see in the room uh, to help close and seal the deal. Hmm. Well, you know what's interesting, Marge, is, you know, Lessons in Leadership really tries to understand what we can learn from other leaders, the challenges that leaders face, what, what they've learned from their own mistakes, and the unique positions people have based on a variety of factors. You're a woman, you're an African-American woman, you're making deals disproportionately with white older men. Right. Mm -hmm. Not not exclusively, but largely. To what degree do you feel you have any advantages, disadvantages, or is it a non-issue when it comes to deal-making business development as a leader? Such a loaded question. It is because Uh, I'm not, people could say, I could empathize with Marge, but can I really? I can't. There's two parts of that, Steve. The one thing is that I have to be 70% better than all of the counterparts when I go in the room. Number two, most of the deals I make is still with all white males, period. There is very few leaders that look like me that I could go into the room, boardroom and say, hey, I'd like to sit here and be a part of your team. Three, um, I find that um, even though we've talked about Black Lives Matter, we've talked about you know, di- di- what is it, diversity and equity, there's still mindsets, as you know, biases that still exist that, oh, you're still an African-American woman. So I have to go in 40 times stronger, harder, more detailed, more structured, more intentional so that they will eventually listen. It may not be the first go. I may have to come back two or three more times and then they finally say, oh, okay, this is making sense. And then we can start to get to the negotiation of the deal. It's still, it's still, it's still an on game, off game. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Oh, by the way, there's an echo here, Elvin. Just, I don't know if it's me or not, but um, you could tell we're not editing it live. So, Mary, check this out. Mary's got this crazy positive attitude. Trust me, I don't know where it's coming from. Half the time she's talking to me. She's like, oh, yeah, it's a good day. I go, what's so good about the day? So, Until there, there was one day, March, where, where I literally was just, just no, I would consider myself normal. And Steve's like, what's up with you? And I'm like, I'm fine. He's like, no, but you're not your typical self. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fine. And I wasn't the, it's going to be a great day. And so, that's yeah. That's what I'm used to. And trust me, there's a question here, March. In your business as a leader, rejection? Yes. No response? Yes. Disrespect at yes. times? not even acknowledging you're in the room, yes. knowing you're better than someone else and not getting the job. Question, yes. how the heck do you, because I've known you for 20 years plus, how do you keep your positive attitude and what the heck does that have to do with leadership? You know what? I stand in their shoes of not, they don't understand who they're talking to. So I try to make sure I can see where they're coming from. I'll sit back, I'll watch strategically, I'll listen deeply and understand their language is going to tell me how I need to respond or not respond during that time. So a tough mindset is very important if you're going to continue to be a leader in any business. If you don't have a tough mindset and you can allow people's disrespect not be your issue and understand that eventually that will fully circle around because, you know, most of the time when people are disrespectful, they're insecure. They're not quite sure. It's about them, Mark. It's all about them. So, you know, you, once you take yourself out of it and you really stand strong and powerfully in who you are, you know that you got to give them five minutes to calm down, calm down, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> and you know what? I will tell you one of the gifts uh, that I'm very proud of myself for and my team is that uh, they say they'll watch me in a room when somebody's being extremely disrespectful. They don't even know I'm the CEO. They're just talking. And uh, one day the guy says, and who are you? I said, well, I'm the CEO with this $10 million contract and I have to pay you when this is over. How about that? And I said, can I get a glass of water now? And they all just like 
straight <laughs> to the floor. They were like, oh, yeah, so you're like, boom, boom drop the mic. Yeah, I love it. They were like, oh, you're Miss Perry. Oh, yeah, I am. How about Oh, that? you're Miss Perry. You, let me ask you something. <laughs> are you, first of all, you don't appear to take it personally, but I don't know. I'm not in your shoes. Second, are you playing chess with people who are playing checkers? That's right. I'm a chess player. And I always say, okay, I've got a checker player here. Maybe five. <laughs> Maybe five. I'm going to take their king. Okay. I don't even know if they know what a chessboard is. It, uh, okay. But you're playing. Marjorie Perry is playing a different game That's right. with other people who think that they're holding all the cards. That's right. I know. I'm, I'm sorry for all these, you know, uh, gambling and, and, and chess. And I'm, I'm a blackjack poker person. Mary, how much of this is having a strong mindset? No one's going to throw me off today. Yeah, I well, that's what I think is so great about women in lead, leadership. And I think that's why Marjorie and I really hit it off from the first time that we met. We are two very strong women. We're confident. Mm -hmm. And sure, every human being gets knocked off of his or her game. But being a woman, being a parent, being a wife, being whatever, it, it you see things from a different lens. And it's helped me to become more well-rounded as a leader because you do have to wear so many different hats and you have to play so many different roles depending upon the situation. And I think women, frankly, have that ability to adapt. I think we're more multidimensional yes. and not to say anything negative about men, but I do. I think that we have that ability to really change, you know, in, in a moment's notice. Oh, what? Right. Hold the phone. Right. right. Hold the phone. <laughs> One second. We're taping this show at the end of June. It'll be seen later. So hopefully this will be dated. This morning, my wife Jennifer and I got into, let's just say, a spirited conversation. Mary, which is otherwise known as an argument. What? So oh, uh, yeah. it's an argument. So we're going back and forth, and I'm convinced I'm right. It doesn't matter what the details are. And I'm now bringing up everything I've done and why I'm so <laughs> a great husband and a father. She's like, that's not what I'm talking about. You did X. That was a problem. And I went back and forth. And, and I had to tape the show. I wanted her to back down and say, listen, by the way, normally she makes me a nice cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> I had to go to the local Krausers for coffee this well, morning. Well, Steve, I, I need to jump in right now and I'm going to prove my point. Are you ready? Right. So this morning you called me when you were on the way to get your coffee. I could yes, tell that I you did. weren't yourself. You weren't, you're like, hey, it's going to be a great day. I had to pivot on a dime. I was going to start with, hey, it's going to be a great day. I immediately knew something was up. I had to, That's right, Mary. Right. I had to manage the situation. Yes, Steve, we've got this. I'll get you what you need. And, and you're like, what's that clanking? And I'm like, oh, just me getting my studio together. Welcome and to the just Steve Autobato therapy session. And, then, okay. and, that's my, exact, and Steve, that's Marjorie, what Marjorie, why wouldn't my when, wife back down? Why wouldn't my wife back down and say, okay, listen, I'll make you a cup. She listen. I said, I don't need you. I'll make this cup of coffee. She said, good, get used to it. But you respect her as a woman that's strong in oh. your life. Absolutely. But, let me just say this, and I'll get off it. I grew up with a very strong dad. You knew my dad, Mark. Yes. Married my yes. dad a little bit, passed, you know, uh, a while back. My mom from a different generation, she was like, yes, Big Steve, whatever That's it true. is. Every once in a while, I know this could make me sound terrible. Just give, let me have, let me, let me win. But wait, you know what, Steve? Let me just say that from a leadership point of view and from personal- it's supposed to be leadership. I'm talking marriage. Go ahead. <laughs> At the end of the day, there's times that we may say, okay, you know what? You can't win everyone. Let them have this one. Let her Let them have, have this, this one. one. But I'm going to look for them next week. And we're going to have to <laughs> renegotiate next week. Because it's never going to be 100% with anybody. It's never going to be. So if you're going to back down, it's because you see that there's a bigger game to be gained down the road than for you to sit there and be right or wrong. I always say in leadership, and even when I teach my courses on it, I said, yes, you can be right, but then there's the collateral damage of what happens out of that hard rightness. By the way, tell everybody where you did this. You know what? You're slick. You're not <laughs> only a chess player, but you're slick. Oh, I saw what you did. I saw what you did uh, when I was teaching my class. Can we just let everyone know where you did a little uh, advanced higher education work recently uh, where you learned a few leadership things? Go ahead. Well, I just graduated from Harvard University Business School. The, I'm uh, sorry, could you say that again? Harvard Business School, OPM. I did two years on leadership strategy and finance and private equity. Um, it is one of the best things I could have ever done because it took me to another level of mental toughness and understanding. Yep. And two, there's always room in negotiations to give a little, but you got to know what your Zopa is. 
All okay. right, listen, Marge, two things. Number one, I cannot forget the Seton Hall Vicino Leadership Institute because they're one of our sponsors. Harvard, we love you, but you ain't sponsoring us. That's number one. <laughs> number two, Marge, I would like you to call my wife after the show and tell her what a great guy I am. I will. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary, so, what, I, go ahead. what did Elvin just say? Elvin said you're 15 minutes in. you got to get out now. Mary, final question for Marge. Oh, well, Marge was just about to say something. So I'll let Marge, if you no, uh, had something yeah, you were going to say. Yeah, Mary, I was just, you know, reiterating what we talked about as women and women in leadership is that we always have to perceive what's happening and be four steps ahead in the conversation because people will always tell you where they are. You just have That's to be exactly open right. and adaptable to like, oh, something's not correct there. Let me just sit back, observe and see what I can do to mitigate the situation so we can keep it moving. You think 100%. women are better at that? that? leadership yes. trait that yes. Mary and you are shaking you're saying <laughs> yes. that's like no doubt in your mind right there, there are certain things that I could say men and women have the same ability to do that is something that intrinsically I think is just more in the culture and the DNA of a woman yeah and, and men say, are great at negotiations I love yeah. being with men in the room when mm -hmm. they're negotiating because their no means no and women sometimes were like well maybe no men are very good at the no do me a favor, edit that whole thing out about me and my wife, Jennifer. Just cut it out. Because, <laughs> you know. Hey, listen, Marjorie, um, we respect you. We love you. You're a Thank great you. friend. We learn from you every day. Thank and you. Um, we wish you and your team, your family, and your construction company all good things. And you, God bless you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mary, for both of you having me today. And I wish you all the same as well. Hey, by the way, March Perry should have her own podcast on yes. leadership, on life, and business. And we'd be all in to support it. You're the best, Marge. Right after Thank this, you. we'll be back. Thank you. Take care. This edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been brought to you by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Hey, I want to thank Marge Perry. She is simply awesome. Hey, Mary, switch gears dramatically before we go to a pre-tape with uh, Tony Russo, who's the publisher of Commerce Magazine, the president of uh, Commerce and Industry Association. Um, this past Father's Day, I got to get a chance to play uh, golf with some good friends. Uh, my good friend, Nikki Matarazzo, um, Gary Saldo, Felix Suarez, and a bunch of other guys we play with. Tommy Hayak, you know who you are. Uh, Andy Duke. By the way, guys at the guy where I play golf, they're like, hey, you didn't mention me in that show we did with Jason, <laughs> with Jason Fury, who's the golf pro. You didn't mention me. Okay. Well, here's the thing. The reason I mention that is because there's a mental health issue. Balance. Mary goes for walks every day, which is why I can't talk to her from, I think, five to six in the evening. Um, she does Peloton. I do Peloton. Golf's a big part of my life. These guys that I hang out with, um, they're patient, they're great, they're fun, we laugh, we make fun of each other. You know, meaning, I believe that as leaders, as human beings, if we don't find outlets, if we don't find ways for us to release our day-to-day -day pressures as leaders and managers, and you got to make the bottom line, something's going to crack, Mary. So uh, thank you to all my friends at the Forest Hill a field club also at Essex Fells. Those guys are great up there as well. I just don't have a picture of them. Uh, bottom line, Mary, leadership and balance. Mm -hmm. Work-life balance is everything. You need to find a healthy outlet. And I remember when the pandemic started, I joked with my husband and I said I was having a glass of wine every single night. And I said, all right, this is not the healthiest way to make it through the pandemic. So I said, what am I going to do? And I talked to you about your Peloton. I ended up getting one best thing I ever did. And simply just making that time for me to take a walk. Even, you know, we we do a seminar series in the evening. Last night, we finished at like 8.45 p.m. as we're taping this. And I said, not I'm complaining. Taping. It's great work. We enjoy exactly. it. Exactly. And as we're, tape, as we're taping, we're in a heat wave. It was 100 and 
seven degrees as I was walking outside, not literally, but it felt it. And you need to take that time just to recharge your batteries and you can be a better leader um, both at home and at work. What about if people say, I want to power through, I don't need to play golf, I don't need to do Peloton, I don't need to walk, I'm just no. going to power through. I love my work, I'm obsessed by my work. I don't need an outlet, you say. Mm -hmm. I say that's just a recipe for disaster. Eventually, you're going to break. As they always say, if you're very rigid and you know the rigid branch is going to break, if it's flexible, it's going to bounce right back. And if you don't take that time, you're going to think you're being productive, but you're not as productive than if you took a break, had a sandwich, took a walk, just to recharge your mind and your body. One more quick one on this. By the way, 90 seconds left. Thank you, Alvin. Um, before we go to Tony Russo, the head of the Commerce and Industry Association. One of the things I find, if you do what you're doing to relax and chill, exercise, walk, golf, whatever it is, it's fine. But for some of us, classic hardcore type A's, I'm obsessed with thinking I can be better. I should be a better golfer. Why am I not a better golfer? Why am I, is my handicap the same? Why is this relevant? Because there are times I come home in a bad mood because I didn't play well and I'm frustrated. That's not the point. I, after all these years, I still don't have that right. It's a, a, that, that thing right. It's supposed to be a diversion from the pressures of your job, not creating new pressures to get really good at something. By the way, I don't practice enough to be that good. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah, you need to mentally prepare yourself when you go into that situation. I'm here to have fun, and I know that's really hard as a man who plays golf, but I'm here to have fun. I'm here to be outside. Even if I don't have the best game ever, I still had a really good time. Yeah, P.S. on Peloton, Mary loves riding the bike. She's great. Me, I'm on the bike every time looking for a personal best. Yeah, no, That's not me. That's goofy. I know. <laughs> I'm going to stop. I'm going to see my therapist this week to try to chill a little bit more. I've only been doing this for 100 years. Mary Gamba, Steve Adubato, Tony Russo coming back. Elvin, is that the end of it after Tony? Yes sure, or no? Let's, yep, we'll call it a day after Tony. So, All right. That's it. Steve, Mary, Tony Russo coming up. Check it out. Lessons in Leadership. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to another compelling program where we talk to uh, leaders who make a difference. And right out of the box, our good friend, Tony Russo, president of the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey and publisher of Commerce Magazine, one of our media partners. Good to see you, Tony. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Tony, we're taping on the uh, 22nd of June, be seeing later. There will be a budget, an official budget on July 1st, 2021. Why does that matter so much to you and the members at uh, CIA and well, every every June is is always important because what the state does with our tax dollars and, and the programs that they're going to fund, uh, potential fees, taxes, you know, that's something that we always pay attention to. So what's going to happen this week in Trenton is important. And, and for the first time, as long as I've been working here, the fact that the state's flush with money doesn't happen every year. And so this is going to be very interesting to see how the money is spent. So we're going to want to track it and monitor how that, that, that process goes. Tony, Tony, if you were not the president of the Commerce and Industry, Industry Association, and you were, in fact, the governor of the state, and you had this, it's not an embarrassment of riches because nobody's embarrassed because there's a surplus. How do, you, how do you believe, what do you believe the best way to spend that money would be, should be? It's a great question, Steve, and, and my response would be what our businesses do. Whenever they have a profit, if they're fortunate to have one, they reinvest in the company. Uh, they they purchase new equipment. They reinvest in their people. Uh, so you know the same thing should apply with the state: is reinvest in the infrastructure, reinvest in our workforce. Uh, you know, spend money, save money too, and that's a, a big component of it. You know, our businesses are obviously counting every dollar and making sure that the money is going to be there for the next crisis because it's not, you know, if it's going to be when, and uh, we just want to be prepared for it. So. You know, my advice to the governor and the legislature would be to just reinvest a lot of that money, pay down debt. You know, a lot of our businesses do that. And, and so when you have the opportunity where you have the money and you have the cash, you got to do the right thing and really take care of debt, reinvest and take care of your employees. Try, let me ask you, you know, we've been media, you've been our media colleague for a long time, and, and you've talked a lot about um, the workforce. Uh, Dr. Joe Bloom at NJIT, the president there, talks about uh, workforce issues a lot, the workforce, workforce shortage, et cetera, talent pool. Is there, in fact, a hiring shortage out there right now? No, there certainly is, and that's not a uh, secret. I mean, this has been going on for a few months, and we've tried to raise that level with uh, folks here in Trenton. But, uh, yeah, I talked to Steve. I talked to no matter you know what sector of the business I'm, I'm talking to, they're always looking for new people, whether it's accountants, bankers, 
truck drivers, operators. Uh, so there is a shortage of workers out there. And uh, you could point to a few things, right? I know a lot of folks are saying that the enhanced unemployment is keeping people home. But I also think that now we, we have a situation where we're coming out of the pandemic, the economy is starting to pick up. You know, folks want to hire. We just need a qualified and skilled workforce, and that's not easy to find. And by the way, child care issues, we have a series uh, that we're doing called Reimagine Child Care, which we're talking about quality, affordable child care. Don't kid ourselves, folks. Child care is a part of that equation as well. Hey, Tony, how about this? Um, the workplace moving forward, you talk to your members all the time. By the way, let's put up the uh, Commerce and Industry Association website so people can check out what Tony and his colleagues are doing. Tony, um, how much of it do you believe will ultimately be a hybrid situation? in person, remote, we're, we're totally remote right now, but we're unique. Now, we're not unique, but not everyone can do that. Talk to us. Yeah, look, that's the threshold issue right now that a lot of our members are facing is, you know, how do you bring employees back, right? We have, we represent manufacturers that have been there since day one. You know, they can't afford to have people working remotely. But when I talk to our service providers and insurance companies, bankers, accounting firms, you know, what they're telling me is that, that you're probably going to see a hybrid model stay in place where they're going to want to give their employees that flexibility to work from home. But, you know, they, they stress the importance of coming back to the office, right? There's structure there. There's collaboration with your coworkers. I mean, I think that's going to happen. And I, I think it's just a question of some companies are bringing folks back in the summer. Some are waiting until after Labor Day. You hit something very important, and that's child care. Schools are going to be reopened. So, you know, I think come September, the fall and beyond in 2022, don't be too surprised if you see the model is a hybrid where people work maybe two days in the office and, and three days from home. Uh, and I think that's going to be a model moving forward. And the reason being is, you know, and a couple of members have told me this, uh, if you don't offer that flexibility, I think employees will have choices and they'll leave. So it's a question of if you want to protect your good employees, you got to provide that flexibility. And I think what we learned over the past year is that uh, a lot of employees have worked effectively remotely uh, and yeah. that production was there, so it was good. By the way, speaking remotely, I'm hearing a sound. I don't know if it's just in my head or everyone else can hear it. Um, we'll just continue the taping. That, listen, that's what happens when you're, it's, it's live to tape, if you will. Tony, let me try this. Um, the whole question of um, moving forward, to what degree do you believe, and we talk about leadership a lot, right? To what degree do you believe your members will be most successful who are constantly pivoting, adapting, evolving, and not saying, I want to go back to normal? I think the overwhelming majority of them are going to adapt. And, and, and that was the, the, the lesson learned from the pandemic is if you stayed the same, you basically languished and you faded you away. And I think, yeah, you went backwards. And I think they realized that the name of the game in, in this global economy, Steve, with technology changing so rapidly, with the economies of the world changing so rapidly, with the issues that pop up, you, you have to come in every day to work and just say, what is it that we need to do in order to stay ahead of our competitors and to stay viable? And I think those are the companies that are always going to be successful. Tony, before I let you go, the role of banks, speaking about evolving, the role of banks has dramatically changed, uh, providing um, the managing the PPP process, et cetera, et cetera. Role of banks in this pandemic now and moving forward is 30 seconds. They were the lifeline. Uh, they were the ones that got it done along with the SBA and the federal government. Without our banks, uh, you know, our companies didn't get that, you know, money uh, that they really desperately needed. So it was important. That's Tony Russo. He's the president of the Commerce and Industry Association, also the publisher of Commerce Magazine. You saw his website. They're one of our media partners. Uh, hey, Tony, thank you so much. Best to you and all of your members at Commerce. Thank you. Same to you, Steve. Thank you. This edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been brought to you by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by 
NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.